Hi everyone, I am Michelle the Introvert and I'm back with a new project, a new adventure. Now today's project and adventure is an interesting one. It's an Acadian dish that is very popular here in Nova Scotia and it is called Rothy Pie. Now we usually have supper at 5 p.m. at night and it's a fairly big project so we'll get started right away. Before we get started on the raw pea pie, I would like to tell you a little bit, little bit about my day yesterday. Now, yesterday was a rainy day, a wet day, a windy day here where I live. And it wasn't that warm, like the sun wasn't out. So I thought, ah, today is a good day to cook a turkey. And it was, it turned out beautiful. Um, I had my windows open. And when I cook a turkey, I usually cook it slow for 10 hours. So this is what we cook. This is what I cook the turkey in. It's very big, this big roasting pan. And but this is also what you're going to need if you're going to cook a Robbie pie. You're going to need a very big pan. That's kind of why I'm showing you. Now this here, when I cook the Robbie, it's enough food to last us probably be about three days, like three days. And I'm going I intend to share a little bit with my daughter as well. She's coming over tonight for supper and she's going to have some rapi pie for supper. And when she goes home, like moms do, I'm going to send her some rapi pie home with her. She loves rapi pie as well. So I'm going to get started and I'll walk you through this step by step. So the first thing that you're going to need is some Rappi Pie Mix. I'll show you. This is Dion's Rappi Pie Mix and this is potatoes. This is what this is, potatoes. And you can get the large package or you can get a smaller one. Now I have the large one and it has all the directions here as well. On how to make it and it is quite easy but it takes a little bit of time it takes an hour and a half to cook a rapi pie now I had cooked a turkey yesterday and that is what I'm going to put in this now if you have a lot of chicken cook up a lot of chicken and debone it make sure there's no bones and because you just want the meat for the rapi pie another thing that I have to put in the rapi pie is some bacon. This is for added flavor and has some salt in it too as you know bacon does have some salt and has a really nice flavor. Now I kept the broth from when I cooked the turkey and after I removed the turkey from the roasting pan I put the broth I poured the broth through a sieve or a sifter to get rid of any bones or things like that because you don't want bones in your rapi pie. So this here is the broth from yesterday's turkey. I have it all in here and we're going to need that. The turkey that I cooked yesterday, we also had of course a turkey dinner, a turkey supper last night, but then I took, I deboned it. And all that is is the meat and I have this container full and I have this here there's some in here we actually had turkey sandwiches for lunch today and they were excellent so I have that to go in the rapi pie plus with the bacon so it's going to be an amazing flavor okay we'll get started and I'll just walk you through one step at a time do you hear that sound that's my kettle I have my kettle on and I have it full to the top with water, which is what you're going to need for the rapi pie. You need some boiling water. And I put the broth in this pot and I'm going to have that start boiling. Now while I'm waiting, while I'm waiting what I did is I put some margarine in my pan. You can use margarine or butter, whatever you have, but that's the next step. While I was waiting for the water to boil and for the broth to boil, you see it's warming up there. 
still not boiled yet. Um, I not only put butter in the roasting pan, but I put the potato in my big bowl. Now I have a Tupperware bowl. As you know, I love Tupperware. <laughs> well, I've put the potato in my Tupperware bowl and my next step will be to take the bacon, which I have on my cutting board. My hands are washed. I'm a, I'm a big hand washer. I wash my hands a lot. So my next step will be to cut up the bacon into small pieces. And I'll show you what it looks like after. Okay, I'm back. All right, so as you can see, the broth is boiling. And the, in the kettle, that has boiled as well. So that's all nice and warm. I'm just going to turn this off. Our roasting pan is ready. Our potatoes are all ready in our big bowl. And the bacon has been cut up into little pieces. I just cut them like that. So that's about the approximate size that you want. It doesn't have to be perfect at all, obviously, but just as long as, you know, bite-sized pieces. All right, now comes the next step. Are you ready? You need to have a measuring cup, one cup measure, and we're going to fill this two times with cold water and add it to the potatoes. So I'm going to do that right now. So I'm reading from this package that the Robbie Pie Mix was in. And it says, um, add two cups of cold water and mix well, which I did. And I will show you. It's all mixed in. The two cups of cold water is mixed in with the potatoes. Okay. Now the next thing it says on here is gradually add 24 to 28 cups of boiling broth and water. So we're going to alternate. Half of it is going to be boiling broth. Half of it is going to be water. And we'll just take this step by step. So the first thing I want to do is add some of the chicken or turkey, if you, either or. If you have chicken, use chicken. If you have turkey, go ahead and use turkey. They're both great. Make sure the turkey or the chicken is in bite-sized pieces. And so I'm just adding that to the bowl right now. As you can see, I'll just tip down the tripod here. See if I can <laughs> do this. There we go. Okay, so there's some of the chicken. Now I'm going to just remove this piece here. And I'll break that into smaller pieces. Another thing that I like to mention too is that there shouldn't be any skin on the meat. There should be no skin. We just want the meat. So I have the chicken in with the potatoes and the two cups of cold water. And our next step will be to add five cups of broth. So I'm going to go do that. Got my measuring cup. Bring my bowl over here by the stove. So there's one, two. So I'm gonna have to put this down. So there's three, four, five. Now I'm going to take that and I'm going to stir it all together. I'll stir it and then I'll show you what it looks like. So I have it all mixed together. This is what it looks like. Now we're going to add the rest of this chicken or turkey, <laughs> whatever you have. I'm gonna add the rest of this. And as I go through it, I wanna make sure that these are bite-sized pieces and not big chunks. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'll be right back. All right, so I put the rest of the turkey in the bowl. 
So there's about three and a half to four cups of turkey in there. If you only have three cups of chicken or turkey, that's fine too, because we still have the bacon too to put in. Now the next step, and I'm going to go get my boiling, boiling water. We put five cups of the broth in. So now we're going to put five cups of the boiling water in. That's one. That's two. So I put the five cups of water in, but I'm going to need more water from the kettle. So I'm just going to turn the kettle back on. I've already filled it again. So we have five cups of the broth and five cups of the boiling water. And there's more boiling water to come. And I'm stirring in the turkey. I'll show you. You can hear the kettle in the background. This is nice. This is what it's supposed to look like. I know for anybody who hasn't had raw pea pie before, it probably looks hmm, kind of different. Not like nothing you've never seen you've ever seen before, but it tastes great once it's all cooked. It's such a popular dish here in Nova Scotia, and it's also a lot of people's favorites. When you go to a restaurant, a lot of people order raw pea pie. So I've got it all stirred in, all the turkey, and I'm waiting for the kettle. But now I need to put in some bacon and five more cups of broth. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. So I only had four of the five cups of broth. So I used the rest of the broth. It only added up to four. So the fifth cup, I didn't have quite enough broth left. So I will use hot water for the rest of what I need for the recipe. But it's gonna taste great. There's already so much flavor I know that we've already put in to this bowl. And this is what it looks like. But I have to be careful. I don't spill it all over the place. Can you see that okay? Now the kettle's almost boiled. I'm going to turn the oven on to 350 degrees while I wait for the kettle. So I'll be right back. So I, I turned the oven on to 350 and now I'm going to add that cup of water in which I didn't have the, the last and final cup for broth. Let's see, I'll pour that in. Okay, so all together so far, there's 15 cups of hot water and hot broth. I'm gonna add another five cups, so that'll add up to 20. That's the reason why I needed more waddle, uh, water in the kettle. So this is two, three, four, getting close to the top of the bowl. I'll show you in a minute. Five, that's why you need a really big bowl. I'll show you how full it is, okay? See how full that is? So I have to be very careful now when I stir it. But we're almost, almost near the end. We're almost near the end and I'm gonna stir this very carefully. You see that okay, everybody? See how the bacon is all, oh, you know what? I almost forgot, silly me. I have to put the last of the bacon in. So I'm doing that right now. Here's the bacon here. We need that bacon. We need it for flavor. There. Okay, so now we'll, 
Now we can stir it in. Okay. There we go. That's better. That's what it's supposed to look like. All that turkey and all that bacon mixed in there. And I have my oven on to 350 degrees. So we're doing very well. Whoops, sorry about that. Didn't mean to bump there. Still getting used to my new tripod. I really like having my new tripod. It makes all the difference. Still learning a bit about vlogging. But I'm having a lot of fun. And I sure enjoy having you guys come along with me on my adventures. I have more adventures coming too. I've been making a list of ideas. Things that I think you might enjoy. Things that I think you might you guys might find fun. Alright. This is what it looks like. Everybody, I'll show you. Carefully move the tripod. See how mixed in it is? That's what it's supposed to look like. Just like that. All mixed in good. And I should say as a reminder, if you pick up the, the potato mix, the Robbie Pie mix, and put it in the freezer, and you want to cook it for supper the next day, make sure you take it out of the freezer and let it go in the fridge overnight. So by the time you use it the next day, it's all ready and thawed. Because when it's frozen, it's really hard to, hard to kind of work with. So it's a lot easier when it's thawed. Just a little tip and a reminder. So this is what it looks like, everybody. And I'm going to put it in my big humongous roasting pan here. Whoops, sorry about that. Thought you could see. It's a little bit off there. I apologize. Okay, so I'm going to pour this into the roasting pan and let me just fix this. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Oh, man. Oh, well, I'll show you what it looks like in a second. <laughs> All right, I have it in the roasting pan. I made it to the roasting pan. Okay, let's take a look. Da -da -da -da. This is what it looks like. And now I'm going to put it in the oven and I will cook it for an hour and a half at 350 degrees. Oops, sorry again. And when it comes out of the oven, I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, I'll see you then. The Rappi pie has been in the oven for one hour. Just another half an hour to go. It's almost done. Well, everyone, take a look behind me. What do you see? It's finally done. And it turned out great. I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see. And that's a Rappi pie. With the Rappi pie, a lot of people put salt and pepper on it with margarine or butter. But also, a lot of people, like myself, we put molasses on, just a little bit of molasses on the, the rapi pie. It tastes really good with molasses. Or it, if you don't care for molasses, just add a little bit of butter and margarine with some salt, a little bit of salt and pepper, and it tastes great. That's what we're going to have tonight. Maybe someday you can join me, and when we have a Robbie, you can come by sometime and we'll have it together. In the meantime, stay tuned for my next adventures. There's more coming up. If you like my adventures and you, if you liked what you saw here today, please click like on the, the YouTube button or if you want to, press the subscribe button. So until we meet again, my friends. Have a good dinner tonight, and, ha and I'll see you next time. Bye.